Michigan won the 2024 College Football National Championship. After losing last season in the Fiesta Bowl, they remained the only undefeated team this season. So how did they do it? My name is Bryce Wilson, and I'm a mental performance coach. I watched all of the post-game interviews of all the Michigan players and coaches, and I found five main reasons that Michigan won the national championship. Last year, Michigan's last game of the season was a loss in the Fiesta Bowl. And this is what their star quarterback did after the game. He watched the entire trophy celebration of the winning team. And after the game, he had this to say. We'll be back, and I promise that. That feeling of failure that he and his team felt that day fueled him every day since, and is one of the prime reasons that this year, they went undefeated and won the national championship. Those moments where, you know, we're at our lowest and we don't get what we want in the past two years, that's the reason we're here today. But it's not just about the failure itself. It's how the team interpreted the failure. They used it as motivation to push them to go the extra mile in every workout and in every game of this entire year. They didn't get upset, complain, or sulk in their failure. They used it to their advantage. I don't get better, get better. Change the I to an E. This is a great motto. There's no value in getting bitter and angry with a loss, a bad failure, some hurtful criticism. Getting upset will only waste time, bring down your energy, and even cause you to do something that you'll regret. But if you interpret those unfortunate situations as happening for you and not to you, you can use the loss as fuel. You can learn from a failure and either learn or get motivated from a criticism as well. If you do this, then you'll gain something useful from the situation. It's bittersweet because this is gonna be the last time we get to play together. I love those guys so much. It's just such a special group. The second reason is that the team had a strong bond. He just experienced the incredible high of winning a national championship, but it's still sad to realize that this is the last time he'll be playing with this team. That shows that he really cares about the team and that they're more than just teammates to him. I love this team. When we faced adversity, we just looked to our right, looked to our left, and knew we couldn't let our brothers down. The reason that having a strong bond as a team is so important is that it creates a sense of loyalty where you don't want to let your teammate down. If you're on a team with teammates that you don't care about, you're not going to give your full effort when a teammate needs help. You might make the selfish choice instead of the unselfish choice that would help the team. But on a team with a strong bond, everyone will work together because they don't want to let each other down. And I do love them. They're like beloved sons. The coaches that are on our staff, they're like brothers to me. There's not too many teams that have teammates that genuinely love each other. And to get to that point means that they've spent a lot of time with each other on and off the field and likely know a lot about each other's personal life. I think once you know a lot about someone, you tend to get closer to them because you realize how similar you are, even if on the surface you're different. Being close to your teammates is crucial to creating a championship team. I do have 27 touchdowns, but I couldn't have done it without my offensive line, my tight ends, my receivers, just a team effort. The value of having a strong bond with your teammate is also that you'll have strong teamwork. Teamwork is a non-negotiable piece of a championship team. Talent can win games. It can even give you winning seasons. But to be the best team in the league and win a championship, you have to play as a team. Teams that work together will always find a way to stop a selfish, talented player. And working as a team is always a stronger attack than going solo. You pull off the longest run of your season. How did you keep that drive alive? You know, offensive line did a great job of holding up so they couldn't shut on their blocks and you know, the rest was history. Teamwork only works if everyone on the team is a team player. Everyone has to buy into the idea that they're better as a team than they are on their own. When everyone does this, then the team will accomplish some pretty incredible things. Coach has called you the greatest college quarterback to ever play at Michigan. What do you think you are? I think I'm JJ McCarthy, a kid from the Grange Park, Illinois, that's just trying to be the best he could possibly be every day. That's all I think of myself as. For teamwork to work, you have to have some humility. They just called JJ the best quarterback to play at Michigan. And Tom Brady played at Michigan, by the way. And JJ just shrugged it off and didn't let it get to his head. If the quarterback really thought he was the greatest, then he wouldn't trust his teammates as much, try as hard, or give everything he had to benefit the team. Humble players are typically the hardest workers. Will, tell me about the play. Just a spectacular intercept. Man, that's all credit to Coach Minner, D-line up front. They made that play for me, and I just capitalized on it. This player just won Defensive Player of the Year, and he immediately gave the credit to his coach. And with a team of this humility, I bet that if they asked the coach the same question, he would give his credit back to the players. A team full of humble players and coaches understands that they all need each other to perform their best and that no player is better on their own. They're better as a team. And they're in that position, not because of themselves, but because of the team. Well, it starts with like a 30 to 45 minute meditation in the morning, right when I wake up. Towards game time, once I get under the goal post, it's just like a 10 minute tune up where I just try to focus on my breath, focus on my heartbeat. The last reason is their mental practices. Elite players know that they need to improve their physical, technical, and tactical ability, but they also know that they can't neglect their mental ability. Athletes who take care of their mindset have a major advantage over other athletes because not many athletes work on their mindset. Think about it. How many athletes do you know that meditate? Probably not many. That's why if you meditate or have a practice 
that calms you down and brings you to the present moment, then you have an advantage over the vast majority of athletes. And as athletes, we know that even a 1% advantage can be the difference between winning and losing a championship. Mental health is a big thing for me. Like, I, I see the therapist. I see a therapist quite often now. The best athletes are taking their mental health and performance seriously. And if you're not, you're going to get left behind. If you'd be interested in learning how to improve your mindset and give yourself that extra edge over other athletes, then check out my new Winners Academy, where I'll personally coach you through any mental struggles that you might have and teach you how to develop a winner's mindset like these Michigan players. The link to the Winners Academy is in the description. Also, if you learned something new in this video, check out my last video to learn more.